Finally, I am got set down here to do some recording. I am sorry that I didn't have an episode or a, a vlog up on Tuesday. No, today's Tuesday. On Monday, yesterday. And I know we didn't have any set schedule, but I kind of wanted to get these little short vlogs up every day. And, you know, I did notes and I tried to go step by step and it just wasn't natural and it sounded forced and choppy and... I don't know, more rambling than I usually am. So I just scrapped the whole thing. And I know you guys don't care, but I just wanted to explain that to you. So today is Tuesday, January 11th. And I was trying to get around and get this done this morning. It was very overcast, so it was a good day to record. But you know how it is. One thing came ahead of the other, and um, the morning got away from me. I spent about an hour in the barn getting some things around because we've had kind of a cold snap and, you know, I've done, had some things I needed to get done there. And so I worked down there, came in and had a shower and some lunch. And so then as soon as I sat down to record, the bright sunlight came in, which is beautiful to look at, but does make it a little difficult for recording. But we're not going to complain about sunshine. So here I sit and I'm also, I'm going to try not to wiggle around too much. That was something I noticed in what I had recorded for yesterday. I mentioned on Instagram that I did. I kind of aggravated my leg and hip, just some arthritis stuff, and it's a little bit uncomfortable. And so as I sit for very long, I find that I get a little fidgety. So I apologize in advance if I look like a kid who has to go and use the restroom because I'm wiggling around so much. Anyway, enough of that blathering along. I have a cup of coffee. And there's more out in the kitchen if you guys would like some too. I don't usually like to drink on the podcast, but um, I, it just tasted really good. And so I brought it in here just to finish up and to invite, invite you along for a cup too. I've got tea out there too if you don't drink coffee. So I have some things sitting over here on the table next to me. So excuse my reach. You see a little bit here I want to show you. So this little episode, somewhere either before, right before this or right after this, I'm going to put in a little clip of two-ply yarn versus three-ply yarn. And um, at least I hope that I will have remembered to do that. And so we talked about that just a little bit because I have gotten some questions about that. The other question that I've gotten is, what pattern are we going to knit? With our sock yarn and I, I thought I'd mentioned this but maybe I wasn't very clear. I'm not choosing a pattern for us to, to make. I have a couple in mind that I might make or I might just do something generic but uh, you choose the pattern. That could, uh, could depend on a lot of things. The weight of the yarn that you're spinning, the amount of yards that you're going to have, and what kind of sock you wear like we talked about earlier on. So Get a free pattern, get a pattern that you already have, support your favorite designer, whatever you choose to do. But I would say that either you're going to have a pattern in mind and you're spinning with a goal of making, creating the yarn for that pattern, or uh, you're going to spin your yarn and see what your weight and yardage is and then choose a pattern. So it's um, knitter's choice, spinner's choice there. At least that's the way I'm thinking of it. So... Okay, that's it about the pattern. Um, fibers. I've seen a lot of really neat fibers and fiber possibilities, and I really appreciate that you guys are showing those. And if you could, if you're on Instagram and you're sharing them, um, tag me. I'm at my wool mitten, um, or you can use the hashtag my wool mitten. And we also have a hashtag for the spin along that dear Susan in Ireland. Um, posted originally, and I thought, boy, I guess we do kind of need a, a hashtag for that. And the hashtag is um, hashtag SockSpinAlong. And I'll try to put it up here. I'm just going to look. Yes, SockSpinAlong. That is what it is. Um, so uh, and this is just uh, my sock spinning philosophy. It's not anything set in stone. There are a lot of people out there that know a whole lot more than me. And so, but I'm just having fun journaling and recording this for myself, and I really appreciate you guys being along. So what fibers have you decided on? Uh, share again, and, and maybe you've changed your mind. Maybe you've started, and then you said, you know, I don't really like this. I don't really have enough. Um, so you might have changed your mind after that. And um, 
I think I mentioned a couple resource um, books for patterns that you may want to have, but I thought as a kind of a roundup for today's episode or vlog, I'd show you a few other resources you may want to have on hand. None of them are necessary, but they're just things that might be helpful to you in spinning anything, but certainly in spinning our sock yarn. So um, let's see, what shall we start with? I'll start with, of course, we have the roving already. Um, you've been spinning your yarn. Now, you may be a person who likes to use a control card. I'm going to hold this up here. Hopefully, it will show. I don't, personally, but they can be useful. And all they have to be is a little index card. That's all. This is a little scrap of paper. And if you've spun a yarn and you want to compare it to another yarn you've spun or if you want to keep that for your records or maybe you want to keep it so that as you continue spinning you can refer back to it and let me show you this up closer again too since we were talking about two ply and three ply what's that my top two ply my bottom is three ply I don't know if that's doesn't look to me like it is. Oh, there, maybe it's focusing. And I also noted that it was Coradale fiber. I spun it on my Luet S17 wheel. And I did mention on here what ratio I spun those at. Not because I paid that much attention to that, but I wanted to remember to mention that to you because that's something that some people think about. On your wheel, on your bobbins, or however it's set up, you have different ratios that affect the speed of your spinning. I just tend to spin on the, my, the Louette has three different ratios. I tend to spin on the medium one and I tend to ply on the faster one. So um, if I'm doing like a sweater or a mitten spin, I tend to go for the, the slower whirl. Um, excuse my reach here, guys. Another thing that's really helpful, but again, you don't have to have it, but I find it helpful is a scale. And I covered this up just, well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's, I bought it at the post office years ago. I mean, many years ago, back when I was doing soap. And it does weigh, it's digital. It weighs ounces and grams. Maybe you just have a kitchen scale that you can use. If you don't have, don't fuss. But it is easy to, for example, weigh out our one, you may have seen that I like to do a one ounce bump of fiber. And I can weigh that out on there and then have my little, you know, um, bits of fiber all set up. It's also helpful because then when you've spun and plied your yarn, you can again weigh it on the scale and see as you were drafting if you had to pull any pieces out, you know, how much you might have lost. And as you wound your yarn onto a knitty knotty, if you have one, and I didn't bring mine over here, if by chance you don't know what a knitty knotty is, I'll insert a picture. But it's basically what you um, wind your yarn off onto and um, to skein it up. And so I can count my yards on my nitty, nitty knotty and then I can weigh. So let's say I have, well, the one that I just spun. I have an ounce that I spun and I got 54 yards. I might be saying that wrong. Anyway, you know, and then I can I can weigh it again to see yards ounce. So a scale is helpful. Now another thing that's fun, it's not necessary, but I think a lot of you do this anyway, and so it might be fun for this project is a journal of some kind. This happens to be a journal that I made in the yarn shop I used to teach at. We did a um a class or a workshop and we made journals. I made a couple of them and this one I've never used. So I could use this as my, as a journal and record the things like my sample spins, um, what the yarn is, what pattern I'm going to use. You know, and a lot of you I know do journaling, art journaling or, or um, different kind of things. So that might be fun to you for you to do. Or the little pocket size ones that can go in your basket or your knitting bag. Now, I tend to use, I'll show you, it probably is going to give a little glare. 
<clears throat> just like the notebook kind that you buy or a student planner one. And this is how cheap I am, guys. I wait till they go on sale, like after school starts or towards the end of the year. Can you see? I paid a dollar US for this. And I bought like four or five of them. And then they're this is divided by months and weeks. And these are what I use a lot. They're spiral bound and lay flat. So, you know, you might want to think about doing that just for fun again. Um, if you have a lazy cape for your bobbins, to, you know, to apply, that's great. If by chance you don't or you need extra, I think I've spoken about this on other pod episodes of the podcast. And this is all over out there. This is this little hack has been around for years. But you can make your own nitty natty out of a shoebox, some old knitting needles. This one is nice because for some reason there's like this little hole right here. I can close it up and then I sort of have tension. Maybe I shouldn't show the brand. So there's another thing that you could, if you don't have that, it's a way to make do with something that might be around the house. And so um, I think that's it for just a few other little things I thought maybe you might find interesting. Um, you can use a wraps per inch tool. I don't tend to use one. I've never found them to be accurate for me. Now that's probably user error. In fact, I'm sure it is. But for me, again, I tend to go by feel or, um, you know, how many yards per ounce, that kind of thing. Um, have a good supply of knitting needles for your pattern, whatever is your favorite kind. Um, just a little side note for knitting needles. I don't know how much you stress about this, but uh, like I like to knit on size threes or size fours. I like double points. And because I've usually got more than one pattern going, project going, if I say I only have, because I work on like four to five double pointed needles, if I have three size threes and two size fours, I mix and match. Doesn't really matter in the in the end. There's a place and a time for perfection and for being exact. This is not the day for that, guys. Doesn't really matter in the socks that we're knitting. Everything about this, I'd like to be relaxed, and I I, I think it is. I'm hearing from a lot of you that you're you're just taking that relaxed attitude. Like I said, a sock philosophy. Let's look at it that way. And so last of all, if you haven't already, some of you have, but if you haven't already, let's start spinning. Let's get going on these socks. And one thing that I do, I mentioned, I put my roving up into one ounce bumps. That's what this is. And when I get ready to spin, I open that little bump of roving. And I, I this especially, you can see how, how thick this roving is. So I like to pre-draft. And by pre-draft just means, oh, what's the word you hear sometimes? Attenuate. Anyway, just a little pre-draft is just loosening the fibers. That helps me get a, a thinner spin. Now I, I do draft a little bit more as I'm spinning too. But I don't know if you can see how that's doing. Just kind of opening the fibers up. If you had, if you were spinning from a bat, um, you probably wouldn't need to do this or from roll eggs. Um, if you were spinning from comb top, you'd probably definitely want to do that just to loosen up and fluff up the, the fibers. Oh, and another thing, if you're having trouble drafting your fiber and it's not felted, See how I started at this end and pulling. So say it wasn't moving for me. Not very well anyway. Try flipping around and starting your draft from the other end. Does that make sense? Um, say, pretend this is a nice long piece of roving. And you're trying to draft from this end and it's just not working with you. Flip it around and draft from the other end. Not it, it doesn't happen that way with all mills, but with some fiber mills, it does make a difference. It's like the, the roving comes off the carter 
in a very definite direction. So just give that a try. It might help. It might not make any difference at all. But So that's just a little tip as well. But so, guys, other than, I would say, plenty of coffee, water, tea, whatever you like to drink. That's the other thing we need. And let's get spinning. And it might be another day or two before I podcast again or before I record again. And I might shoot for going towards the weekend and doing um, a little bit longer episode. Maybe have a little bit more spun. And you guys might too. So uh, be sure to keep interacting. I really am enjoying that. And I meant to do this today, but I think I'll save it. There's been some good questions that I've tried to answer briefly, but maybe we can share them here if I record an actual episode and um, answer some questions, or I'll give my answer or advice, and then maybe you will have some back. So that's all, guys. This is getting to be a little bit long. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying the spin along. I really appreciate you joining in. You guys have cheered me up uh, immensely. And I've heard from a lot of you that this has gotten you excited about spinning again or excited to spin um, or to think about it. And nothing to say that you have to knit a sock right away. Spin the yarn and, and play around with it a little bit and, uh, you know, knit your sock later on. So... I think I'll go spin some more in this sunshine. Take care. Talk to you real soon. My coffee's gotten cold. Better go pour another cup. You guys didn't drink it all, did you? See you soon. I'm super, super happy with this spin. This is the first ounce of plied yarn for my socks. Um, I have mentioned that I had to make an adjustment and I switched to spinning on my electric wheel which uses uh, Ashford bobbins. They don't hold quite as much. So for the test spin on that, because I knew it was going to be just a little bit different than what I was getting on my Louette wheel, I spun, I took my one ounce bump of fiber, I split it in half and I spun half an ounce onto each of the two bobbins. And that took me about um, 20 minutes to spin the half an ounce, and then it took about 10 to 15 minutes to ply it. So that's not too bad. And also, I left this here to show you that I dropped it out pretty close. There's just a little bit more on one bobbin than what was on the other. But I really like the way this looks. I'll try to get a picture in daylight tomorrow. Um, and this is the two-ply. And look how nice and squishy. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm going to wind it off onto my Nitty Knotty, which my grandpa made for me. And, and he was very careful to make it and be sure that it measured exactly two yards around. So let's see how many yards I get out of this. It, it's one ounce in total. Half an ounce on each small bobbin and then plied onto the larger bobbin. So one ounce here. Any guesses as to how many yards I might get? I'll let you know.